Well, it looks like Fatty McFhead's back to doing what Fatty McFhead does best, and that is being a complete nut of head, in my opinion. T-shirts on sale now at FriendlyGeordies.com. I'm expecting I'll get a lot of sales from WA. They won't get there until the border reopens, at which point they'll wonder, Oh, why do I order this shirt? This doesn't have the Hungry Jacks logo on it. Hopefully anyway, because look at this. 96% of Wazzies want the WA border to remain closed. That percentage is so big that even the news anchor, who's trained not to give opinions, had to admit. The overwhelming majority want the hard border to stay that way. Michael? I think the message is clear. I'll say, what's clearer? Good meth doesn't even reach 96%. So I'm pretty sure that poll just has a 4% margin of error. It's just that one fat No offense to you, fat Sorry you sullied your name. Remember when Clive wanted to sue me for claiming that he doesn't work in Australia's best interests? Well, Tubby, that's Australia, right? Half of it anyway. Clearly, their interest is not having your snoring while you're awake faulty nose up in their state's business. <laughs> to take money from Queensland, Nickel, and... Breathing in all their clean air and breathing out COVID, which, if you really think about it, is just a bigger metaphor for what he's done to your state's mining industry. Willing to risk an entire state's health because he wanted to meet Matthias Corman. Couldn't just watch twins as Danny DeVito and Arnold Schwarzenegger talking is basically the same as you two hanging out. No, no, he had to get the constitution involved, using a 200 year old document to force borders open during a pandemic that we didn't even know existed a year ago. Bet you're wishing you took secession from Australia a little more seriously now, aren't you WA? You had your chance. Now a tub of Philadelphia cheese is gonna determine whether or not you become plague. Which first off, why does he get to use our constitution? That man's more American than Christina Keneally. Stranger, you're violating my constitutional rights. No Aussie says that. No Aussie self-obsessed enough to even know what our constitutional rights are. The only reason I'd ever care what's in our constitution is if it said, Hey, according to the charter, as chief constable, I'm supposed to get a pig every month and two comely lasses of virtue true. Sorry, can we all just appreciate the phrase two comely lasses of virtue true? Comely lasses, good enough by itself, but virtue true? Bring that back to describe your V-plates. Now, of course, the Liberals, really representing the constituency that got them elected, Clive Palmer, home brand Howard, stating, the constitutional position is one that provides that fellow Australians can follow free movement and that should not be prevented. Well, that's odd, Scott. Didn't really care about the constitutional position when you were trying to ram through your religious freedom bill. Didn't seem to care about the constitutional position when you were proposing visa restrictions that are unconstitutional. Self-sustaining hot air balloon Clive Palmer himself didn't care that there was a constitutional crisis that he could have caused back when he was a parliamentarian. Frankly, neither did I. In fact, I wish he did just for the lols. You heard me. I think constitutional crises are a meme. Go tell your parents that don't take me seriously that. But also tell them, Scott Morrison and Clive Palmer think the constitution is a meme. They blow their nose with the constitution when it doesn't suit their interests and use it as a tissue to wipe away their tears when it does. If you want any more proof of that. One of the most disappointing things in the court this week has been the situation where the chief medical officer from Western Australia, um, Dr. Andy Roberts, explain to the court that uh, Tasmania, South Australia, Queensland, the Northern Territory and the ACTU um, all were more successful than Western Australia in eradicating the virus. That was his testimony, a very courageous testimony it was, because he went on to say that he'd advised the government that they could have a travel uh, bubble between Western Australia and Northern Territory, for example, and the government failed to respond to his uh, advice or get back to him. Which is even more unconstitutional than just shutting down the border. I cannot believe I'm saying this. I really thought I'd be the last person on earth to, but I think Clive Palmer's a bit of a head and a fatty mc one at that. In my opinion, t-shirts on sale now at friendlyjordies.com. What even is your plan, Clive? To pretend you're some crocodile wrestler from NT and sneak on in? You spent $60 million on billboards with your face on them. I think they're gonna know it's you. Why would you even want to go at this point? Look at what's waiting for you. Meanwhile, this event is getting traction on Facebook. Cough at Clive has more than 10,000 interested in attending. Yeah, that's fine. None of them have COVID. The borders have been shut. Haven't you heard? This isn't to take 
break away from the Constitution. It's a remarkable document. The founding forefathers were obviously very intelligent, and Emmett Barton knew how to get the party started. His entire first term at office was basically just one long goon review, and that is exactly who should be the first Prime Minister of this country. But I don't think any of that matters. It doesn't matter how intelligent you are, it's very difficult to be writing a document in the 1800s that properly considers the impact of aeroplanes. It doesn't matter how smart they were for their time, the founding forefathers' policy against corona probably would have been, Here you go, have this cumin. God seems to be less angry at you when you do. No wonder Clive's so attached to that document. I'm pretty sure that's how he thinks it's cured. WA's Mark McGowan, on the other hand, who unlike the Prime Minister, seems to have a few more people's interests at heart than Clive Palmer stated they can come up with all the arguments around constitutional niceties they like and the constitutional requirements for them to intervene. Frankly, they're doing the wrong thing. Well said, my impression of him, but not as well said as this. Mr Palmer is the enemy of the state. He is the enemy of Western Australia. Those are strong claims. Move over Daniel Andrews. We have a new contestant for the nickname of Dictator. F*** the Constitution and declaring enemies of the state. And I'm down with it. Mark McGowan is both figuratively and literally a king. Bounce. Speaking of kings, like this video, because the king of common sense commands it. I'm the king of common sense. Then, king number three, Michael Cusack's new show? The man keeps outdoing himself. I thought he peaked when he drew those f***ed looking kids in plasma. Look at that one. He's a f***ing hockey puck. But his new show, even better animation than that. King number four, King Curve. And it again, pointing out that the ABC should stand for a bunch of cucks, gutless pricks who won't even air the documentary BBC put together outlining the power of the Murdoch press. Follow his Twitter because he basically says what I say in about 10 words because he actually has a command on the English language. It's almost as important as Cusack's new show, which is about drunk bitches. Anyway, like the video guys, thanks. Please share and comment below. Command.